What's up, everybody? We are here with one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time, a legend, Tito Ortiz in the building. What's going awesome, on, man? man. How you Thank you, guys. What's up, Tito? Yeah. Yeah. How you awesome, doing? Man. Thank you for coming, brother. You know, thanks for having me. Yeah, Appreciate glad it. you're here. You know, we've talked to you a lot of time. Our guys are always catching you in the street, but we, I don't yeah. think we've had you in a building yet. Man. Never. First never time? to date. No, no, never to date. This is actually the first time you sit down with you guys. And yeah, man. Chop yeah. and shop. We were just talking, we just walked by Harvey. Harvey was like, oh my God, I'm starstruck. Yeah, man. it's awesome. Good to have you here. <laughs> no, you good. got a big fight coming up, man. Yes. You're fighting Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio, it's December real. 7th, live on pay per view yeah. uh, in Hidalgo, Texas. I'm going to smash this guy. This guy doesn't realize. <laughs> he called me out, man. It was just one of those things. You know, last year, Chuck Liddell called me out and he said he's going to smash me and knock me out. And uh, I made him look old, uh, made him yeah. look slow. And man, it just uh, started a fire into my ass. And now it's like, you know, time to go back to war. Um, Alberto Del Rio called me out and said he wanted to fight me. and. You know, the money's right, everything's perfect, uh, my body's reacting the perfect way, and uh, I'm going to get my hand raised. A lot of people are saying Alberto, he's a professional wrestler, no chance against you, but Alberto says, hey, I'm not just a wrestler, I was on the, the Mexican national team, I'm a wrestler, I've fought before, it's yeah. been a little bit, but I've fought. I'm going to beat the hell out of Tito. Yeah, that, he has a record of 9-5, and five, so he has, a, you know, he has a mixed martial art background. Um, of him saying he's going to beat the hell out of me, um, he's never fought anybody like me. Yeah. yeah, I'm vicious. I, I, I'm just a different animal when it comes to getting into the cage. And uh, Alberto, you know, I'll, I'll give him credit. You know, he, he got my respect. He got my attention. Uh, I've been in camp now for this will be my 19th week and I've been wow. going hard. Um, my last camp against Chuck, I put in 18 weeks and it was hard, but the fight was easy. So I want to make sure that this camp was super hard. So I make the fight easy, but I want to entertain my fans to buy the pay-per-view. Um, I do what I do every single time I fight, and that's put on a show. You know, it's entertainment value that people buy the pay-per-view for. You know, this is a cheap one. You know, thirty-nine ninety-five. Yeah. Get um, call your local pay-per-view provider and uh, Tito Ortiz versus Alberto Del Rio. So he's forty-two. Yep. You're forty-four years yeah. old. Forty-four years old. Forty-four yeah. years young. Forty-four years young. Tito looks yeah. great. <laughs> I know you're in incredible shape. Yeah. You look great. No, I'm um, good. Uh, he, he he's. He's training with Ryan Bader. He's out in Arizona. He moved his whole life out there. He says a 12-week camp. He's taking this very seriously. He's yeah. very focused. He was in here a couple weeks ago, and we, we talked to him, and you could tell like he was getting really excited about it, and he's intense. Um, and he says when he's at camp, he's grinding. He had a big old gash over his eye. He says they're training hard out there. You've fought monsters before. You've fought some of the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at a guy like Alberto, what are, what are his strengths? What are the things that you think he does well? That you need to be concerned about, and where do you think there's an opening to just you know take advantage of the situation? Yeah. Um, you know, I look at his strengths in wrestling. You know, he's a Greco-Roman uh, wrestler. Uh, his mixed martial art record of nine and five. I watched some of the fights that he had, and he looked really strong in the tight positions. But uh, I see a lot of mistakes that he makes by um, overreaching, trying to grab a guy. And my boxing skills. I mean, I I, I should be able to pick him apart. He's a bigger guy at 6'5". Um, you know, he's going to weigh in at 210. I got to weigh in at 210. Fight time will be about 225 each. But, you know, on this type of fighting with those little four-ounce gloves, one punch can end the fight. Yeah. So I got to make sure I protect myself. I got to make sure that uh, I stay aggressive and I do the right things to play my game that I know what I'm going to do. Right. Um, you know, I, the people he trains with, Ryan Bader, I beat him before. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, he's He is the light heavyweight world champion for Bellator and heavyweight world champion for Bellator, but I beat him when I was, we were fighting UFC back in 2011. And I was at probably the bottom part of my uh, game in fighting and um, mental side of it. I was just going through a lot of you know, right. personal problems, yeah. um, problems with the business. So it's just, I wasn't the right guy, but I still, I beat Bader because I had a clean camp. It was a great camp where, you know, I didn't have anybody behind me telling me how horrible I was, but I just had the focus of doing what I'm doing now with a positive reinforcement I have, you know, with my girlfriend, Amber Nicole Miller, that is just amazing uh, girlfriend, mother to my children. I'm, I'm very, very thankful to have her because she has my support, has my back, and, you know, really gives me the positive reinforcement I need to get through day in, day in, uh, out of, training camp you know I'm putting in three days a session three days oh three times a day six days a week wow. I'm just putting myself through a grind three wow. times a day three times a day like last night you know we we're doing jiu-jitsu and uh, wrestling and we're doing uh, five five minute rounds and I ate a good uh, knee in my face last oh, yeah, night yeah, it's, <laughs> a little little bit, yeah. it's, it's not that bad and, um, it, it, it hurt but it wasn't that bad <laughs> yeah. It made me a little pissed. I kind of had to slam the guy a little oh, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, rolling with all these younger guys, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit on the elder side of being 44, but I still feel young, you know, going with guys who are 25, 24, 23. We were just talking today know. about George Foreman. George Foreman was a heavyweight boxing champion of the world at 45 years old. Yes. Right, still beating guys, uh, beat Michael Moore in who was twenty right? Who was 26 years old, yeah. Was 26. Yeah. I mean, you, I would imagine, and he's a freak athlete, right? He right. was great. But you, you, so are you, and not only that, but like you have the advantage of, you know, all of the, 
developments have been made in you know science and diet and all yeah, that stuff. Yes. Um, how do you feel right now? I feel amazing. You know, once again, you go talk about the science. Uh, I do a machine called um, I, was it um, CVAC, and it's an altitude simulation machine. It simulates altitude, so it puts mm. me up to twenty-five thousand feet in altitude. It uh, keeps me there for about a minute and a half, and then it drops me down to a thousand in about two seconds. Wow. And then it re-goes back up and it gives these little variations for a 20 minute session. I do four sessions a day. It's at Ascent Adaptation in Newport Beach. And so it reproduces red blood cells on my body. Um, my last camp, I added this um, other thing is called a hyperbaric chamber. Everybody knows right. hyperbaric chamber yeah. and it's for inflammation, for soreness and so forth. But I added this on the weekends on Saturday and Sunday. So as I'm reproducing these red blood cells from Monday through Friday, um, you could only add so much red blood cells to your body. Well, doing the hyperbaric chamber, it compresses all those red blood cells and produces white blood cells mm -hmm. so you can recover even faster. Wow. So adding this has actually kind of gave me my fountain of youth. So are you early. like, like Evan said, like 40 it used to be looked at as old. I mean, you DC still out there, 40 years old, killing it. You look, sound great at 44 years old. Are you as good as you've ever been? Are you? I'm better than I've ever been. Just right to, now, 44-year-old right Tito Ortiz, Ortiz is a better fighter than you've ever been. 100%. You know, before, you know, I was afraid of getting hit. Now, I, my boxing skills, I'm not afraid of getting hit. I'm, I'm, I'm wow. throwing down with the guys who are pro boxers, who are uh, boxers that hit hard, and I'm not afraid of it, you know, just because I'm able to bob and weave and get out of the position. My whole career, I've always learned how to do a block, use my hands to block, use my hands to block. Now, I'm even moving my head to mm -hmm. move and get out of the way. and. How boxers do. Right. Before, I've always had to worry about head kicks and knees and so forth. But no, if a so takedown you, comes, the takedown will come. So you want to stand a fight with Alberto because you just you just lump him up. I'm right? gonna I'm gonna dot him. I'm gonna dot him. Show my fast. <laughs> I'm gonna dot him. Show feet work and see if he can catch up to me. I don't think he can. Um, he's never fought anybody like me. He hasn't fought in a long time. And like I said, he called me out and he wanted to fight me. Combat the Americas wanted to pay what I expected, and I'm very thankful that they're able to respect me in the value that I'm worth. And um, I'm going to put on a show for my fans. This awesome. is what I do when I fight, man. I put on shows. Yeah. I got so many questions for you because I guess like we yeah. want to talk to you for a very long time. Yeah. One, yeah. talking about getting hit in the past, who's the hardest guy ever hit you? Do you remember a guy who hit you when you're like, that dude? That dude, that dude hit me power. hard. Uh, Vanderlei Silva. Mm. Oh, yeah. When I won my uh, <laughs> middleweight world title, um, he hit me with the right hand. I went to go body kick him. I body kicked him, he caught my leg, and he hit me with the right Ooh. hand. And when he hit me with the right hand, it felt like the earth went upside down. Oh I just, God. I fell to my knee, and I remember <laughs> sent him back up, and I like ran away from him. And when I ran away from him, I hear him going, <laughs> trying to chase me down, and I ended up getting a takedown. I ended up winning the fight, uh, but that was the hardest hit I think yeah. I've ever taken that I can remember that it made me go, holy shit. <laughs> really? like, I was like, I'm afraid to get hit. This is not yeah. fun. My fighters say, man, you shouldn't be afraid to get hit. I go, well, that's a stupid fighter right there because I don't want to get hit. Yeah, it's not right? fun. <laughs> right. I didn't know if like the adrenaline was so much during a fight where you don't even feel pain. So you, you actually don't. You, really, pain? you really don't feel the pain. You feel the thud. You feel the thud. Right. And, and like, uh, I don't know if when you're younger and you ever fell off your bike and hit your head on the concrete yeah. and you get that bzzz, yeah. your bell rung feeling, that's what it feels like. Wow. It's not pain. There's no pain behind it. Do you, oh, okay. I, do you know, like I always think there's like 20,000 people watching you. Are you aware of all that? Like there are, yes. or are you just so like zoned in? <laughs> Some fights I'm really zoned in. There's yeah. a lot of fights I'm really zoned in, but there's other fights that it uh, takes the first punch. First punch you get hit, clipped, and all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> you hear everybody going, yeah, really? yeah, you hear know, that? yeah, and you're just like, wow. hear, but I love it. I feed off of that. You know, before all my fights, I always go out in the arena and I do autographs, right. and I'm yeah. one of the only guys that ever do that, yeah. but I've always done that just to get the, you're get like the, the Cal Ripken. I, well, I like to get the feeling yeah. of the fans. Yeah. You know, the fans that are paying for the tickets to be in the arena. I want them to, you know, get an autograph from me, or just kind of talk to them and hear them, and, and just feel their energy. I love it. It's yeah. just uh, how I've always been, man. I've always been a, a fan fighter. Yeah. So uh, I want to go back to Chuck for a second, because you know you fought Chuck a bunch of times over the years. At the end of your last fight, it looked like you guys are. You guys had a pretty intense rivalry for a long time. Where are you guys at now? Are you guys friendly? Do you guys talk? Yeah, we're friendly. You know, we are friendly. It's just one of those things that uh, it's kind of like I told you so. Yeah. Um, I fought so hard for what he's trying to fight for now, but now he can't be can't really be heard. Um, the thirty for thirty was supposed to be a right down the line kind of story, and it wasn't. It was deviated from what the true truth was. Um, he got yelled out by Dana. Dana had control over it completely. Um, I, I I try to say the truth. He tried to say the truth. Uh, about. 60 other people they interviewed try to say the truth and UFC said nope that ain't happening nope that ain't happening went through 19 edits wow. and um but you know i guess when you're a billionaire company and uh, you're, you're 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 to that level and you could do those things you have the control so you weren't happy with the with 30 40 <laughs> no, no i wasn't happy with it. i got to tell you you know from my perspective i watched it and i thought you came off for me i thought you came off as like an expert promoter and somebody who was really 
smart in the way they promoted themselves and a pioneer in that way. Thank you. Where you realize that like you had to be bigger than just a fighter, that you were a brand and that people were tuning in to see all that stuff. See, that's what that's that's what most of the story should have been more of, and it really wasn't, um, of how I fought and try to make more money for us fighters. You know, when we're only making four percent of the total revenue of each event that goes on, we're getting undercut it completely. And then when you try to speak out, they undercut you, say you're horrible. Dana Center says I'm a stupid man, I'm a dumb businessman, he's I'm a dumb guy. And it's like, okay, how many times are you gonna say I'm dumb, dude? Um, I'm not too dumb if I could sign a multi-million dollar contract with a, a company at 44 years old. I mean, sure. come on. I mean, I have other businesses I run, you know, teaching my kids, doing things as a real parent, uh, doing things as a businessman, doing the things that I do. Um, proof's in the pudding. As you guys get older, do you think there's a chance that you guys could eventually kind of bury the hatchet and, and kind of get along at some point? Or you, well, me and... You and Dana? I hope so. I mean, I I love the guy, man. There was an opportunity here where we were... Yeah. Bros. I mean, like, right. friend, good, good friends. I mean, I remember going to his mom's house and his neighbor, her neighbors that were upstairs would always, like, be loud at night and stuff. And I went knocking on the front door and they're like, ah, come in. I open the door. I go, hey, listen, guys, you guys better chill and respect the lady downstairs. They're like, holy shit, it's Tito Ortiz. <laughs> How scary is that? Tito yeah, Ortiz. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, and I was like, door, listen, you better be respect quiet. the woman downstairs. Right. She never carried a grocery ever again. Right. Uh, upstairs. Awesome. I mean, and I mean, I, I always went on my way to, to help Dana, but it was just one of those things that when it came down to negotiations, I only learned one way to negotiate, and that was the way Dana taught me. Right. My way or no way hang up. That's the way he, that's the way I learned. Right. And that's why I try to learn, but it was just, uh, we're two bulls in the same room. Yeah. You can't really battle against horns. It was just one of those things that, you know, um, I went about things a little different. I think I should have went around about things a little better. Um, you know, of course, having a t-shirt that says Dana's my bitch wasn't something smart to say um, or smart to do. At the same point, I was just trying to stand my ground. Sure. And, you know, it, uh, it was one of those things. But in the future, you know, he's a multi, 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 multi-millionaire. You know, four point, was it $4.5 billion? Yeah, dollars, right. uh, that's some big But you're, money. you're open to, to some kind of like a reconciliation. Yeah, like you've done so much together. great yeah. stuff together. Look what you yeah. guys built. So, yeah. I mean, yes, 100%. It's just one of those things. I am, um, you know, I, I, I get attacked a lot by him or by social media or by fans and stuff, and it's nonstop. And I just I wish I'd get a little more respect. You know, at the end right. of the day, it's not about the money. You know, it's, it's about the respect value, how much I give into the sport and everything I sacrificed to be where I am today. You know, I've had eight major surgeries. I shouldn't mm. be. I, competing at all right now but I'm able to do it because of my mind I believe in myself and I push myself to the limits in training that my body reacts perfect and the recovery that I've had after my surgeries my doctor did an amazing job and I'm very very thankful because of it do you feel like you don't get enough respect when people are talking about the greatest fighters to have ever fought MMA uh, the new are fans, no. The new fans, they're, they're uh, attracted. He's in the Hall of Fame. No, yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, I mean well, the, the, and the, you the help build fans, the sport. Yeah, I mean. well, the new fans attract to what is going on now. They don't really see what got those right. guys here. Uh, but the older fans, the guys are my age, um, guys that are in their late 30s uh, and their 30s, they respect me. And yeah. usually, after watching uh, the ESPN 30 for 30, they do. Right. You know, they, they, they kind of see through the bullshit. I always I see fans like, no, Tito, we, we knew what happened. Yeah, we knew right. what was going yeah. on. They, they kind of see through the bullshit. But I just know the truth, and I know the exact time yeah. category that it goes through and it's like no that didn't happen that was bullshit it was like him reading out the phone oh tito's being a pussy and he doesn't want to fight me <laughs> right. and it's like come on guy this yeah. ain't true but you know at the end of the day um uh, i'm just i'm thankful for, for tito's buying the company for them giving me an opportunity that i had um i killed myself doing it and i had fun doing it um i'm still having fun doing it is it your body fun. in pain good because you did have so many wars so many mm-hmm. surgeries is your body in physically in pain like you wake no, up not and really. hurt in the morning no not really i thought it would be a lot worse but yeah. no i think the um, hyperbaric chamber and the uh, cvac yeah. machine um at ascent adaptation in newport beach uh, really helps me out a lot um, how much longer do you see yourself fighting for uh, maybe a year or two wow. you know, it's a good couple years you know randy couture won the heavyweight world title at the age of 43. Right. you know he went on to fight until he was 48. Yeah. i don't want to fight when i'm 48 you know i want to fight a couple more fights and you know, maybe go on some other different things, some other fun stuff, some other entertainment stuff. I got a film coming out actually uh, December uh, 6th. Bruce Willis. Yes, Bruce Willis, uh, Nikki wow. Whalen. Um, Bruce Willis. That's, yeah, that's, yeah that's no. Pretty awesome. It was, was, it was pretty awesome. I, I played a bad cop. I chased this girl around the hospital and torture her a little bit, and she tortures <laughs> me back. And we go back and forth. The cat and mouse chase you game. Bruce wow. Willis? No, I do not fight Bruce uh. Willis. Uh, I didn't get an opportunity to shoot and film with him, um, but I did get an opportunity to meet him. Um, and I think he's a big dude, right? Um, not really. Oh, he's, really? He's yeah, I thought he was tall. No, he's, he's you know, about 5'9", 5'10". Mm, right. um, 
But you know, when I walked up and met him, he looked at me and goes, Holy shit, you're a big <laughs> rig. I was like, Yeah, yeah. I go, God, you look young, man. Do you ever age? He goes, Ah, no, you know, I do what I do. But he was a cool guy. And I think the fact that when he said, Holy shit, you're a big guy, that's when it kind of my character got pulled away from him during the film. But uh, that's just my assumption. I'm just saying. So you're talking about your other career plans. Uh, in the 30 for 30, we're talking about, you could see your love for like pro wrestling. You I could love see it. See that, you know, you, you've always loved it since you were a little kid, I right? I loved it as a kid. You know, you understand? I mean, that, I remember. Everybody would go out and play, and I'd be on my couch, and I'd have a cape on, and I'd be like, yeah. Tito Ortiz. My mom would be there with a little horn, and Tito <laughs> Ortiz. And I've always dreamt of that, man. I've always dreamt of doing that, of being in the WWE World Championship. Have you talked to them yet? I have not spoke with them. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I talked to uh, Shane here and there, but only for tickets to come, because I bring my kids. Right. My right. kids are huge fans of it. But I don't know. You know, um, what time can tell? You know, right you now, know, we're just seeing guys, Cain Velasquez. Sure. Right, he and made he, he made the yeah. crossover and he looked horrible. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> he's got potential. Though. He got potential. He does right. have potential. Ronda Rousey's killing it over Ronda there. Ronda Rousey's killing it. Congrats to her. She's doing an amazing job. You've had a job. ton of guys over the years who have done both uh, WWE and MMA. Brock yeah. Lesnar. Yeah. Brock uh, Lesnar making the crossover from uh, professional wrestling to MMA. They're going back there and he's a beast right now, man. That yeah. guy, that guy is a monster. Yeah. For sure. So that's something you're interested in. I'm very interested in something like that. It'd be fun, and I think it's just uh, put a little nature, oh, the, he'd be great. Of the, the bad boy image into it, and uh, you know, I, I just always been a huge Hulk Hogan fan. Yeah. And uh, for this fight, uh, I'll be coming out. I think I'll be coming out to Hulk Hogan's uh, theme music. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah, just I'm a real American. I'm a real American. <laughs> yeah, dude, I like all. it. It just makes sense. And you know, Alberto Arria being a WWE heavyweight world champion, I me mean, being a UFC former light heavyweight world yeah. champion, we have our belts. So I told Alberto, I said, let's put our belts on the line. Right. Winner takes all. Shit, he bit a hook, line, and sinker. And I was right. like, I'm in. And so <laughs> I tell my kids this, and they're losing their mind. They're like, what, Dad? You're, you're telling gonna me we're going to get a heavyweight championship belt? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. They're like, no, Dad, we know you could beat him. Yes, yeah. we're going to have to. Now so. you have to win. It's funny, it's have funny to win. that your kid, you have belts from beating people in, like, real fist fights, right. and they're most excited about the one right, the WWE. That's but hilarious. you got to understand, it's still no, like, that, it. that, that the theatrical <laughs> side of it that, you know, that he built his brand up to That's be true. the champion. Yeah. There's other guys that wish they could be the champion, but they can right. never build themselves right. up because they didn't either, they didn't have the charisma behind it, they right. just yeah. didn't have the knack or just something they couldn't fulfill to be that champion. Right. But he was able to do that. So if I have an opportunity to win that world title, then I beat him for that world title, then Brock Lesnar, you better watch out come coming after your world title. Oh, interesting. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so we'll talk I'll about a couple of things. So, uh, so we've talked to you in the past about your relationship with the Trump family. Yes. I think you told us on video that you've invited uh, the sons to come to the fight. Yes. Are they coming? No, they are not uh, coming. Okay. So they'll be in uh, Mar-a-Lago okay. that weekend. Oh, they'll watch on paper. Okay, Trump's his resort place, yeah. with his family and everything. So. But they hit you up. They send you messages. You guys talk. Yeah, yeah. I talked. We went to eat together. together. Yeah. We went to lunch together yeah. recently yeah, in New York, right? Uh, yeah, I went to lunch with uh, What's that Eric. Like? Uh, it was cool. It's just cover the cut conversation, yeah. man. Right. Oh, with Secret Service around and everything. Yeah, there was a couple of Secret yeah. Service around. <laughs> they actually they gave me a little American flag Secret Service uh, badge oh, on it. Oh, cool. They're very respectful. They're good. But you know, on Donald Trump, ask you like like for fight tips. Uh, no, just pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were cool guys. You know, uh, Donald Trump Jr. came down because actually I think he was going to Kentucky that uh, that night, so he just came down to say hello and so forth, and oh, cool. we, we shot the shit a little bit. But it was cool, man. Cool. They're they're really down to earth guys. You know, and just as their father is. You know, when I worked for him on the Subway Apprentice, he was very genuine, very down to earth, very. Took D- his did time you recently see the president? Didn't uh, you? I have not. Oh, you didn't. Okay. I, 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 he was at New York. I didn't. I wasn't. At that he show. was okay. Uh, I didn't well, know if he had met him. No, okay. I haven't, I haven't. I haven't got a chance to see him since he's been president. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I got a kind of a surprise for my fight, so I um, have my big sponsor for my shorts always, and uh, for this uh, fight, I'm actually putting Trump 2020 on the front of my shorts. Really? Really? Yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So you guys can't do it because you guys live in, here in Hollywood. I live here in <laughs> Orange County, and I'm proud of it. Because, it yeah. You know, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, but I'm an American. Yes. I believe uh, safety of our country and taking care of our uh, troops, all of our uh, soldiers is really important, and. Uh, you know, I think California needs a little help right now, especially with the homeless. You know, the people try to say it's a, it's a housing thing. It's not a housing thing. It's a, a sickness. You know, a lot of these people have mental health, and they need to take care of that. It's important um, just for the future of our country. Is there a extra tension between you and Alberto because of the political aspect of it? Because um, he's think, not a fan of Trump. You're yeah. a, a Trump supporter. I, I think it is, and I think he's a little confused because he is not for borders, which I don't understand. I mean, everybody has a border. Um, you have a border of your home. You have a fence around your house. You have a lock on your door. Right. Take those locks off your door. You know, take those uh, fences off your house. You don't feel just that safe. And I think for our country to be safe, to live in this great country that we live in, you know, um, people got to wait in line. People got to do it the right way. 
And you know, the way I kind of make it for simple terms for people is like, you invite someone over to your house, they come stay at your house for a few months, okay? And uh, they don't pay bills. Um, they don't pick up after themselves, they don't wash anything, right. and they just mess up your house. Would you like that person to stay in your house any longer? No. Right. Now that same person lived in your home, and that person washed his clothes, cleaned up after himself, helped pay for the bills. It's like, wow, cool, I got a good roommate. This person is a good person, I want him to stay here. He's not stealing anything from me, everything's perfect. This guy can stay here. That's how it should be. People con should conceive exactly what that means, and that's what it is. It's not like all of a sudden, oh, we're kicking the people out because they're not supposed to be here, no. If you're a criminal and you're not supposed to be here, you're gonna get kicked out. And you're not an American, you're gonna get kicked out. And that's the plain, blatant, simple idea behind it. It's not just a factor of attacking people towards race, which is far from that. Our president is not racist, and people need to understand that. I mean, why would he hire me to do the oil on the celebrity apprentice? I mean, he go out of his way for people. I mean, you can see how many African Americans that support him, how many Mexicans that do support him. You see Latino for Trump. I mean, there's so many people that do support him. It's just, uh, I think the left wing people just are really just trying to attack because they're trying to finally get being seen for what they are as liars and uh, taking advantage of corrupt of our country. You know what's funny is that, like, uh, we're in the holiday season right now, and uh, yeah. this is a conversation that's happening almost across the country right yeah, now, yeah. and uh, the fights that happen. Oh, no yeah, one's fighting him on this, though. No, no. <laughs> no, I, I, wanna, I, I hit him with facts. I hit him with yeah, facts. Yeah. and. Uh, I just want to tell people how it truly is. Yeah. Look at it black and white. Don't look at it one subject of one side or the other. Look at it just black and white, right, right down the middle, and, and, and weigh the pros and cons. That's how I've been grew up, raised, man. Weigh the, weigh the pros and cons. If it's right, sure. then it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. You yeah. shouldn't be doing it. And that's the way it is. And yeah. I think the Democratic Party is trying to teach him right now. They're, they're, they're being shown for their true colors. Are you going to be a part of his uh, his 2020 campaign? I know Dana White spoke at the Republican. Yeah. That's so funny. You and Dana White have so much in common. So, so much in common. So you spoke that. at the RNC. <laughs> Are you going to be part of the campaign uh, the next time around? Yes, I will. I'm, I'm already starting it for this fight. This really? I'll be putting Trump 2020 right. on my yeah. shorts. Yeah. And I'm already starting it. I'll be walking out with the Trump flag or with an American Mexican flag together, too. So All I'm right. going to see how that goes by. And uh, I, like I said, so maybe man. you maybe you and Dana will see each other at like uh, one of the like rally, a rally or something. Or something? Like yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's weird. It's just one of those things that either Dana does it behind camera, just tries to be the bad guy against me behind camera. But when I do see David, uh, David or Dana in Vegas, he always says what's up. He's like, right. what's going on? You know, so if I ask cordial. for tickets, right. we're cordial. I mean, right. So he'll um, give you tickets if you I, want I, tickets to a fight? Normally, yeah. Right. I, I think he was just really pissed when I knocked out Chuck because Chuck's his boy. Right. Yeah. And I think he was really, really bummed about it. And yeah. I mean, I told him when we did our face off before the fight at the Hall of Fame for the UFC, you know, what they said, would you guys face off against each other? I was like, what, you guys want to You guys want to promote this? Right. And he was like, yeah. Really? Face off. I was like, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> right. And I was like, and I thought it was kind of like it gave me a blessing. Like, right. go ahead, right. let's do this. And end up kind of finding out that he just wanted to see me lose. And when I didn't lose, I, I made yeah. him mad. And I'm sorry, Dana. I, I did my work. I told you I was going to do my work. After that uh, Hall of Fame, I, I seen him at the XS, and I was sitting at his table, and I talked to him. I go, you know I'm going to knock him out, right? He goes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And I told him. So he him, thought Chuck was going to win. Dana thought Chuck yeah, was going to win. He yeah. thought Chuck was going to yeah. win. Do you, think, do you think Chuck should fight again? No. You think he should hang it up? He should hang it up. He's, um, he's done his time in, in uh, MMA and what he needed to do. You know, At the age he's at, you know, if he was at my age, it'd be a little different. You know, at the age he's at, he's 49. He's going to be 50. Actually, yeah. this next week, right? Next, I think so, next week he's yeah. going to be 50. Right. That, that's it. Let's, let's do other business. Do movies. He's doing good movies. Yeah. Keep doing movies. Um, you know, he gets good sponsorships. I mean, he has a great opportunity. He knows a lot of people in Hollywood, so it's just uh, really nice guy too. And he's a really, yeah. really good guy. Great father. Um, it's just you know, it's just fight games not his business right yeah. now at all. Who is the next big star in the UFC or in MMA on the whole? Like, who's a guy that you look at, you go, that's the guy who's going to be the next big superstar? Is there anybody? The next big superstar. Yeah, everyone's it's saying hard Israel Adesanya right now. There's a lot of hype behind him. He looks great when he fights. Yeah. Yeah, that, that Israel kid, he, he's for real. Yeah. yeah. And I spoke with him, and he's a very mellow mannered, yeah. soft spoken guy. But you can tell there's a little, he got that it factor in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Johnny Bones Jones would get his stuff together, man. It's just, gosh. Could he it, be the best ever? He could be the best ever, but I mean, could have, not anymore. He yeah. just, he tarnished his career so many times. It's just so much, so much stuff that he did in and out of the cage is just. God, it bums me out because I love the guy, man. Yeah. He was one of the best light heavyweights ever to grace the octagon. He's just... So he's only 30, 31 years old. He yeah, still has a whole second right. act in his is career he, to go, though. I, what does he do? You know, I mean, does he continue fighting? And, I mean, the things that he's been caught with and things he's done is just kind of tarnish his career a little yeah. bit. But there ain't many guys who compete with him. They can't. I mean, I, I'd give a go at it. I mean, I wouldn't say I'd win, but I'd give it a go. Yeah. I would 
one hundred. You down to fight John Jones? Come on, why wouldn't I? What do you? What's the way I feel right now? Uh, strategy, strategy, pressure, 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 okay. pressure, pressure, pressure. This is so big, you know. Yeah, you, you can you stand that angle, the outside yeah. reach of him, you got problems with it. You can't just. Sit Have there you and fought fight guys that are long like that before? And what's the what's the strategy? Uh, yeah, for, Forrest Griffin. Um, God, who else uh, was big like that? Uh, that was I think Forrest Griffin was the only one, and the strategy just try to smash him. You know, at that time too, I was I was. Going through so many injuries, I'm, I'm just, I was half the guy I am now, man. I just, being injury free is just such a different world. It so feels great. Right now, though, I'm fascinated by no, that. Yeah. Right you. now, you get in the cage with John Jones, you think you can beat John Jones? I think you can beat John Jones. Oh my God, yeah. we got to see this. I think I, I, I think I got a good chance. I really yeah. do think I got a good chance. And people say, oh, Tito bullshit, you're over the hill, whatever. <laughs> Come to my camp and yeah. come train with me. Come wrestle with me. Come do jujitsu with me. Watch my weight train and watch my biking and stairs that I do. I push myself harder than I push myself through my whole career, man. I'm, it's just, I'm doing amazing. It's just my mind is just in the right place. Yeah. My body's in the right yeah, place. Like I mean, it's just when you don't have an L45 S1 bulging or a ruptured disc or a ruptured <laughs> disc in your neck or a torn ACL and all these little damages that you have and try to get through camp. You got to understand, from 2006 to 2012. I went through camps of training for three days and then taking four days off. Training for three right. days and taking four days. The only thing that made me survive in those draws or split decisions I lost was being up in altitude. That's the only thing that kept me alive because I had cardio. Right. And I mean, I was in such bad, damn, and my body was in bad, wow. a bad place. Especially with my ex that I was with, she was just telling me how horrible a person I was, I'm a horrible father, and that just, it, it eats you alive yeah. in, in general. But yeah. now it's just, I mean, I'm on a different level completely. I think we're running That's out of time, awesome. but uh, yeah. it's been an absolute honor to have well, thank you. Thank I gotta you. tell you, it's been a blast. Thank Tell us people awesome. how to watch your Pleasure. fight, man. Tell us yeah, people. of course. You, uh, on December 7th, live on pay-per-view. Call your local pay-per-view provider. Tito Ortiz. All the pay-per-view will be on Alberto there. Alberto Del Rio. I'm gonna smash Texas. Alberto Del Rio. Don't blink, because this shit's gonna be over quick. <laughs> I guarantee you. Oh, thank, thank cool. you. Okay, appreciate it, man. Cool. Joe, by the way, he's got the personalized couplings and a giant watch. Things that watch right? is, is really heavy. Yeah, yeah. It? Rock well. <laughs> now, of course, you guys can check my uh, YouTube. Actually, it's uh, Tito Ortiz Uncaged on YouTube. You go to my Instagram, Tito Ortiz 1999. Click the link. Subscribe. Check it out. It's going through my whole camp all the way up to the fight. Hope you guys enjoy the fight. It's going to be short, but it'll be an exciting <laughs> one, I guarantee you. Right, thanks, guys. Awesome.